Yes. This song is fucking gay. Sorry. Hey, what's up, Perry? How you doing, buddy? 
Doing well, my man. Just had a good day of uh, finishing up that mix on that new song. Hanging out with my dogs. Literal dogs. And now I'm gonna hang out with my metaphorical dogs. But yeah, good day. Nice Saturday. Hope you had a good one too, man. I saw that uh, new machine you got. That new cylinder player. I'm not too cut up, caught up on my uh, equipment from the time, but it looks nifty. Are you gonna be fixing it up? Right? From what I uh, surmised. I hope you're having a swell Saturday. It's gonna be hanging out here for a bit. Then we're gonna pop over to D Live and try to have a an actual program. I'm a little bit uh, drunk right now, a little bit stoned. Some Red Bull in there. I discovered a uh, Red Bull with San Pellegrino. It was pretty good. I think San Pellegrino. That mineral water is pretty good. I uh, combined it with some vodka, some uh, raspberry vodka that we had lying around. Not bad. Threw in a little, threw, uh, threw in a little bit of a uh, grapefruit juice. Natural, all natural. Pretty good tubes. I'm gonna open the chat on my phone instead of having to squint at the the chat over here. Big chillin'. Got a new phonograph yesterday, cleaning it up right now. Been working on it for like 12 hours, whoa. This sounds cozy, thank you. Well, working on something is fun, but uh, 12 hours, you know. That's, uh, that's involved. <laughs> but if it's uh, a Kino project, you know, that's just how it be. Good to hear making music and chilling with the puppas. Thank you, my brother. Trying to, try to keep it, trying to keep it uh, consistent. Keep that up. Yeah, that was the last of the of the of this year's early uh, early half. The recordings I did then, before I moved back in here. Now I'm gonna... I think I, if I really need to, and I want to, I do want to record more material. Or at least get more uh, flowing. I'm gonna learn how to, how to work MIDI, program my own drums. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna... Utilize the artistic ideas that I I've always had but I never used stuff from my old band And maybe make some new stuff like like I did with the uh, Moon the new track Moon hazard I Just wanted to do something that day. So I thought uh, okay load up a beat on the keyboard I chose a key and a mode, D Mixolydian, and the keyboard sound I wanted with the chorus pedal. Other other keyboard stuff, bass guitar, and then like I had, I had to really compose and like cut out 
parts of the track because it would just be like if not the entire track would be everything going at the same time so and some dips and valleys the ideas I, I guess that part took the, the longest you know and the mixing just because I was uh, working with the uh, electronic drum uh, drum beat which had its own problems because uh, like I used a Radio Shack keyboard and I used the drum loops on it and it has a button you press it and it'll, it'll do a fill like a drum fill and every time that comes in the drum sound is like exponentially louder for some reason I guess for energy like perceived energy but in mixing it, it is very annoying and it's still in there a little bit like you you can hear when the snare like clicks like click click and it goes back to normal it's kind of nifty you know kind of dynamic but i didn't want it to, like i didn't want that to be too strong and it was it was like very strong Something I'd have, I've been having to work with is uh, latency with my reco recordings, like having to guess, like time-wise, like where my recordings are most in time, or like hearing, not guessing, like hearing it. That could that takes a while, because there's a fair gap in there where it's not like on the beat but it could still sound pretty good but yeah it's weird but we're doing it tubes we're making cool music from gathering our uh, knowledge I've been fucking uh, looking into this kind of shit for for years. Opinion on T Rex, Mark Bolin. Um, I don't know too much T Rex, except the, that song on the radio. Get it on. That's a good track. I think once you go on, uh, hey, what's up, Kimosabi? I do it, my brother. Welcome. Once we go on D Live, I could play a little bit. But yeah, that's some of that uh, early 70s glam rock stylings. A little bit more cool. Yeah, rest in peace, Mark Bolin. He did die young. We will honor you. Yeah, I saw that he was a uh, good friend with uh, David Bowie. not been throwing up just released that new track been working on uh, <clears throat> some music well finishing up some music and hanging out with my doggos that's right oh shit <clears throat> what about you my man how's your day your chillax on Saturday. 
And if it wasn't, let it commence right now. Hoyo! I'm starting drinking already. A little bit of blueberry vodka, Svetka, with the San Pellegrino and Red Bull. Not bad. Well, actually, my second serving right now is just San Pellegrino and uh, Svetka. And a little dash of uh, grapefruit juice to make it a uh, nice. It's very watered down. I went crazy. But that'll be it for me, alcohol wise, I think, for the day. <clears throat> Hopefully Pajit lets us play this. We're gonna play right now. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, boogie woogie. <clears throat> kind of influence to this rock at this time. Try to play a bit more, I guess. We're going back to 1972. Listening to Perry's Picks on Palmod Radio. Hmm. 
Save that one. Damn it. That was crazy. I think um, I want that Bowie stole from Bolin. David Bolin. Oh shit. David Balls in. Orange Goblin. I tried listening to them a few times, so, but uh, nothing too crazy. But, uh, let's try. Let's give them a try. Stoner Rock. Wait, can we? Can we play White Zombie? Okay, yeah, I'll play another one after this track right here.
when it's on the radio the other day. I was like, damn. This holds up. Like when zombie was dope. So true. So true. Solo love zombie, he's gay. That's yeah, a good track here and there. I loved that show when I was uh, just discovering that kind of heavy music, you know. First System of a Down and then Slipknot. And it was that era where was, uh, that music was still popular popular kind of like the myspace era there was newer stuff you know like job for a cowboy you know their their hardcore stuff then sevenfold was big when i was getting into that kind of music Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's why I appreciate our friendship here. Playing Rob Zombie while playing Twisted Metal took me back to oh so shit. I never got to play that Twisted Metal, but I've seen less of it for years. That shit is fucking insane. That one character that's just like a two wheels like a guy between two giant wheels <laughs> that's fucking badass I was talking about it the other day uh, like games with uh, soundtracks like that of real musicians you know. uh, Tony Hawk uh, gets it radio this game I'm playing right now and lots of other games too you go and uh, enjoy the soundtrack to your favorite game and it would be a real band with more music in my day we would listen to real music nah. original OSTs are good too but it's just fire to hear you know some shit like that well, I guess we could play that. No problem. Let's play some more. What's part one like? Or I was gonna play another uh, T-Rex track. Telegram Sam. Yeah, that first Slipknot album, dude. That shit made me fucking... That was all my... Pre-teen, teen angst, right there. Great tracks, too. I re-listened to it not too long ago. Actually, on stream. And, um... It kind of like, uh... Some of the tracks get... There's so many songs on that first album. If it was a little bit shorter, it would be punchier, but... It kind of reminds me of the thing I got from uh, heavy music with the, the intensity all the time. It did get uh, too much. It's like, fuck, yeah, variety. Still good songs on that first album. Yeah. Yeah, soundtracks and video games like stri like we we had guitar here on Rock Band. We we had video games introducing us to artists where you could play. You could you could you could play Guitar Hero in that uh, market. 
Not much guitar going on in uh, nowadays. In uh, Imagine Dragons or Katy Perry or The Weeknd. All rap music. It's funny, like around that peak is when the transition was like happening from rock to uh, hip hop and pop, house style pop, and metal fandoms. You know, they're super consistent; they'll never go away. But you know, it was in the mainstream. Like heavily. Now there's a pretty heavy, steady market for all kinds of rock music. You know, yeah, John Mayer like reviving, carrying on, carrying on uh, Grateful Dead. Allman Brothers still doing shit. Uh, you know, legacy jazz fusion people still doing shit. In terms of new, uh, math rock combined with the uh, kind of like, uh, what's it called, like dubstep production, French house production is kind of the newer thing. Like I said, everything else doesn't go away, but it's just not like as prominent. Or like what's inspiring people. Of course, the hyper pop and the trap stuff. Trap combined with hyper pop. That's a big style. <clears throat> Which I would say, for recent stuff, like a lot of cool stuff has come from from that. I would say. I know I don't follow it too much, but yeah. Like, uh, Midas has shown me, uh, Yabujin. Which, uh, was originally, like, uh, that... Young Lean... Uh, Echo 2K style music, and then they made more... Experimental music, but with the same aesthetic. Then Yamai, which is a straight up going into the hyper pop territory heavily with an AI character for the face of the band. But yeah, it's, it's all about uh, electronic music, or it has been. Yeah. You had death grips in the past 10 years whole bunch of crazy good hip hop in general hey what's up MF Doomer how you doing my brother and then you would have like metal or rock genres like going for electronic production just listen to the radio it's like god damn it's sickening just like country Try to go into the electronic music production. Come on, where I want to let me uh, check it out. I want to let me uh, check it out. Okay. Sorry. Trying to open up live chat on my phone. The feel about hardcore music, Protest the Hero. Oh yeah, that was pretty it still is pretty big. Like that hardcore style. Like two thousand hardcore. Like I was thinking the other day, like metal has been way more in the public 
like consciousness than rock like the blues oriented rock like it's been metal various various forms of metal and kind of punk or babies of punk and metal that have been uh, inspirational to the newer generations and I wasn't too I didn't delve too much just um, I guess when you're into metal music it's kind of like that but not exactly but in terms of literal bands from the hardcore scene, I don't know too many. Except for the stuff you showed me, Perry. Which are good. Good songs. But at the time, there was that uh, air of like, oh, scene bands or like screamcore bands or reposers or whatever. That's just because it was super popular. I'm no longer a fan of black people music, and in fact, it annoys me greatly. <laughs> well, that's all right. I mean, in terms of rap, you know, that's a good uh, assessment. But other kinds of black music, pretty good. Enjoy me some James Brown, you know, some Miles Davis. Various black and white people that have worked with them throughout the years. Yeah, good. Yeah, go listen to some Pearl Jam. A small fraction of black music is dope, but nowadays most of trash. So true. Yeah, Kino is Kino, undeniably, always. It does have the, the power to go through anybody. Hell yeah, Perry. Glad to have you here. Get that link right there. Snot, it's snot, 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 snot. I might play the song again, it's so catchy. Magnitude Opposition. Oh shit. Great sound. I like the vocals too. Let's go.
based. Hell yeah, man, that was good. If you want, send in more. I'll play another track here. Twitter Fateful End. guitar. But you've seen these guys live, nice. Yeah, dude, I'm down with it. I don't listen much, much to uh, metal music anymore, but it's good to hear, hear and catch up on some, especially some good shit. Uh, fuck it. Let's put another track on viral or vital emergence. <laughs> Oh 
if only I could. Perry. Oh, music wise, what I've been listening to. Um, just a lot of uh, late 70s Zappa. Uh, Alan Holdsworth. Been uh, dipping into some Holdsworth. And of course, you see me listening to a uh, metal disco on stream. Some Mr. Yuck, which uh, actually, I'll, have I showed you Yuck? I'll let this play, but uh, this is fucking crazy. I've talked to him a few times, you know, we were in the same server at one point. Might have been the BTR server. He's, uh, he's an insane person. He's fucking immensely talented. Oop. I'll play right after this track. But I've been digging uh, Yuck's music in. Because I'm not... I don't listen to a lot of electronic music. And his thing is like an amalgamation of, of all that, like... Late 90s, early 2000s, Portland, rave, druggy, culture, traumatized person, aesthetic, PCP user. Now's magnitude with vital emergence. I'll uh, share that link in the chat right here. Thank you, my brother. Always down to recognize some new music. But yeah, here's uh, some of my likes. Got red velvet. I'm Mr. Yuck. Compilations. I don't even know what that is, but I'll look it up right now. He's always getting uh, banned from social media and Instagram, Twitter. Here's some more yuck. Some, uh, what he calls yellow metal. We got a band cam too. With uh, some releases. Great art. Burn. Burn. 
That one of the last things I heard about him, he was getting stalked by a Chinese person he thought was connected to somebody that uh, he ripped off with Bitcoin. He was like daring them to come over because he's armed and she's got guns. Yeah, he's hardcore, he's for real. We did talk on uh, Discord back and forth just about music and stuff. Duh. I don't talk to him at all. But if I would, I, would I ever do a Mr. Yug collab? Maybe. I wouldn't be uh, too opposed to it. It would be more like I would buy one of his tracks. I'll give him money for a track and I'll do something over it. Instead of a back and forth type thing. Because some artists are like that. You know. like it's, and it is a hard thing you know, to collaborate. Or if you have a history of wanting to collaborate and it not going well. You are a creative person. You can be wary about doing it in the future. But he's a very, but yeah, youngest talent. Another, another track here. He has claimed the fame is a. Uh, making a lot of money on NFTs fairly early on. Not early early, but you know. He had an article like top ri top rising NFT artists. I think um I think if I always thought about like uh, doing interviews, like French artists, <clears throat> like ask Yuck for an interview, maybe he won't. Hopefully, he won't think I'm a fed. Like look up uh, some of the guys who played in uh, like Kill Slug. And those kind of like Boston sludge bands, they still exist. I'd like to do an interview with them. Like ask them, how is Seth Putnam like? How is uh, Larry Lawless like? <laughs> well, we'll see in the future. Yuck still releasing music on SoundCloud as little as a month ago. He's working on a video game too. I think he's just uh, very naughty. He keeps getting banned from Instagram and Twitter. But uh, yeah, he's he's working. a link right here
<laughs> it's literally the the Mr. Yug beat. Don't. Mr. Yuck. Humiliation Greasy Six. Uh, I just posted that right now on the live chat if you're on top chat you might not see it probably I don't know but try a live chat or uh, maybe YouTube is being a bitch and not showing my link Okay, nice, bitch. You never tell sometimes with a YouTube. Oh shit. Greasy three. Yuck on uh, Twitter. Sometimes he would share some music and uh, a lot of cool uh, jungle mixes. Way into jungle music. But he was also into Midwestern emo. That kind of like Midwestern, like post hardcore, kind of like emo rock. It's like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Kinda interesting. It doesn't come through on the music, but it it is interesting to see, you know, an artist like that. It's funny, I was watching an interview recently where an artist was saying, like when he saw, like Eddie Van Halen, like when he heard his voice, he was like disappointed. He was sad to find out how he sounded like, and he extrapolated from that, like finding out how your heroes are is a bad thing but um there are certain artists that could pull off like you go into who they are as a person it's like it's still intriguing intriguing there's such an intriguing like what what is this person that made this art and it it is hard to pull off and maybe the people who do pull it off, they don't do it on purpose. But uh, some people can pull off, uh, you know, putting themselves out there. As, as one does nowadays. That's the market, that's the dealio. You gotta make it big on your uh, personality. And who you are. And Yuck does it well. I mean, he's not making money. But he, like, I'm not... Maybe, maybe if I heard his voice, I would feel the same. But seeing his Twitter posts and all that, seeing his breakdowns, 
all that like it doesn't detract like it's like yuck is a real deal he's a real deal so <laughs> when you see it firsthand it's like oh fuck a little uncomfortable almost just from how real it is but yeah I guess I, I bet if his voice isn't cool I'm sure he's I'm sure he sounds kind of, kind of like a weenie that's fine It doesn't take away from uh, the fact that he's a uh, Mr. Yuck. Who I love. You're listening to Down in the Mirror again. Yeah, I just love his taste. He's got great taste. He's got an aesthetic. He's got like an area that he aims for. And he just hits it out the park every time. That's kind of vague. Damn. It's hard to even put in words. It's hard to even uh, venerate. It's just so, it's just whacked out. It's like abstract art. The top of abstract art where like all the inner, all the inner shit comes out. Heavy on the expressionism. I'll check that out right now, my brother. My brother. We're all chilling out on a Saturday chill stream. Thank you for tuning in. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that might be a gnat. That might be a mosquito. But, yeah, sorry, I was just trying to kill it. But let me let me play this uh, "Talk of the Town" by Drux. Comments turned off. Hmm. Some of that trap. We go in trap mode. Yeah, yeah. Trap pop. There we go.
<laughs> when uh, there's a certain crowd I was hanging out, hanging out with in uh, senior year. We were having a silly time. It might have been me and my uh, previous gang bleeding into their gang. I came out, come, came up with something called the tit slap. It was just a. It's a new dance. It was just something I would pull up when uh, we were all stoned. It was just funny. Tit slap. That's right. Dog, let's go. Thank you, my brother. That's that new, new. Some of that hyper pop. Um, I, th I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, to see where that develops. You know, pop never goes away, so we'll see. Like I was, I was bringing up not too, not too long ago that I think you were there. Like grunge. Like they, Dale. Like industry people are unoriginal. Like they're just trying to push whatever they're good at to be the status quo for as long as possible, and you can't do that. And uh, you can't avoid just the turning of the tides, which at some point, maybe in around 2026, there'll be a way from electronic or rap. Not to say it'll be rock. It'll be something like metal, who knows? Or something that's, uh, may not, none, none of those. But, uh, of course that won't go away either, but it would be nice to see him, the development in that, and to see where it goes. I think it'll all come down to a, If anything, you probably see maybe some Latin influence coming into the trap style. Maybe some reggaeton in the trap style. I'll be tit slapping the fuck out of this track. Hey, <laughs> that's right. Let's go. Ooh. But yeah, that style, like that hyper pop, um, trap pop style. You no know, young lean echo echo two K. And the. Um, I mean, Wolfgang wasn't a hundred percent that, but you know, it, Wolfgang did help bring back a rap. A newer artist like ASAP Rocky, helping push or bring back trap styles or bring back, like bring forth trap styles. I'm not so keen on rap, but I do remember. I think, I don't know, it might have been 2013 or 2012 that I went back to like a, a smaller town to spend the summer and my cousin, one of my cousins, was playing ASAP's first album, released all the tracks. So I I heard even, I, I knew most of it, <laughs> especially the not trap, I guess, per se, but flavorings in there, here and there. 
I don't know where I'm going with this, but... Just, uh, categorizing it in my brain, in my drunk brain. Where will music go? Who knows? It'll be interesting to see where music goes in a world that's not America, Germany. Hell yeah, man. Thank you. You as well, Pear. And I like rambling about music. I think that calls for a weed alert. You're listening to Alan Haltsworth. Some more music I've been uh, listen listening to lately. Jazz Fusion. Guitar oriented. I remember listening to this some years ago when I heard Frank Zappa really liked him. I was like, oh wow, Zappa likes him. I saw live footage of him, I was like, fuck, he's very good. Dove in a little bit and then, you know, when, stu when you discover new stuff, sometimes it's a lot of new stuff at once. You'd be like, oh shit, this, then you move on to something else. Years going now, and coming back to Holdsworth and being like, not be, well, just coming back to Holdsworth and then going through the catalog, like for reals. Like, I'll do my, uh, my spiel, like, lay, lay on my back. Stoned as hell, playing, uh, playing the music. Just like I did with the uh, Grateful Dead. Not for any purpose, like integrating their style, it's just fun to do. Being stoned as hell, listening to music. Hey. Yeah, Jerry Garcia and uh, Holdsworth. In terms of guitar, are two people of uh, I've been inspired by as of recently. Pixies, whoa, let's go. Pause this track. This track is nine minutes. Nine minutes. This is two minutes, so I'll play it right now. The Pixies. When I, when we went in to record, record our first album with my band, I want to. I guess communicate with the engineer, or the recording guy, in a way that he would understand. So, so I was like, I want something like, what's on your, what's, where is my mind? I want something like the Pixies. He's like, oh fuck, I love that band. I love the Pixies. So he knew where to aim for in recording us. I mean, ultimately we weren't the Pixies, so I didn't, we didn't, I didn't get exactly what. I had in mind, but it was a, a very good recording of who we were at the time. At the time, that's um, mockfountain.bandcamp.com. I'll post the link right now. But uh, yeah, we worked with the guy who was uh, kind of inspired by Steve Albini 
and we only we it was a deal his his deal was a one day recording mixing and recording 500 bucks we were uh, just uh, we were able to do nine <laughs> we did nine tracks which is pretty funny all of them are on that album and uh, the sound is not bad at the time I didn't re appreciate it as much but for what we were it was a good recording Beautiful dead, let's go. Yeah, I've seen you with some of those tight, some of those uh, those shirts on Instagram. The, those are tight as hell, man. You wear those to the job site too. <laughs> they can tell this guy has weed. Shh, no, there's nobody there. Don't mark. Okay. <laughs> yeah, besides the vocals, like I was, we were never good on vocals. Whenever we did them, I did them. It wasn't too good. I didn't have the passion to do vocals. So I kind of did out of experimentation and lackluster at that. But we're basically this. <laughs> listening. Listening to it now. I guess if we had the right vocalist or members, we could have been a Pixies revival act. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm guessing. Like, man, this man smokes weed. Friday is weed day. Breaking my body by the pixies. Rock and roll is here to stay. Yeah, there's just been so much um, electronic everywhere. I'm sure even the the Zoomers and the late Zoomers feel that way. There's been a lot of a certain kind of music. And just from being online, everybody went online during COVID. So everybody's like getting acquainted with online culture, which is uh, just getting the information on everything and past stuff, underground stuff. Namely, underground stuff. You can't see that in the in the Zoomer memes coming up. Like talking about Radiohead, it's like, oh, if you listen to Radiohead, you're a fucking nerd. It's like, how do you even know about Radiohead, Zoomer? Using Pearl Jam with a Jesus, skateboarding, Tony Hawk. What do you even know about the Zoomer? It's because we all got online during COVID. They're discovering just all this all this uh, culture that they didn't get to grow up on. Because it wasn't out there. It's not like bits of internet culture would get out on the mainstream, but it would be cringy and centered on like memes or Tosh.0. In terms of stuff that was being shared organically it was pretty foreign to everybody until COVID 
to most uh, of the younger younger crowd. Hey, what's up, No? How you doing, my brother? Welcome. Hope you're doing all right. Gotta take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah, exactly. Just me with my stoner ramblings over here. And who knows, man? What comes is so what what comes next is so mind bogging bogglingly. Bogging? Mind boggling. Bogglingly. Bogglingly? Mind bogglingly new. Like I'll I'll need to adjust. I'll be like fuck. Cause uh, those did happen in the past, you know, they don't happen super often, but it would happen that something so amazing comes out of somebody that's inspirational and just kicks, kicks off something. In terms of uh, my areas, like guitar and stuff like that, you know, kids are, are being influenced by guitar, you know. And the newer, newer music that isn't uh, exactly rap could be adjacent. At least from what I see on Instagram, you know, a lot of people. That's another consequence of uh, everybody coming online. You know, <laughs> they're probably having a guitar phase, or they get into the gear, and all this. If they stick with it, that's a different thing, but it is a, it's a fine bit of autism to get involved involved in. All that guitar gear and shit. Hey, what are you doing? Doing something, hey. Oh. You're listening to Alan Holdsworth. How about you hold your worth in your mouth and don't spit it out?
Oh shit. My bad. I think uh, I might transfer over to that old D live at the top of the hour. Just so we could play whatever we want 100%. Whatever we whatever we want into the night. Whatever you want. Just about. Cause yeah, it's just unparalleled. Uh, time delay be damned. It's just so good. After the, after the top of the hour, I could go, uh, probably maybe some four more hours. If we have some Kino at our feet, we could, uh, go as long as we can. I got in here early this time, so. We're, uh, about to round off two hours at the top of the hour. Whee! More. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. I still have uh... I could still take another Red Bull. Another eight ounce. Eight and a half ounce. With some alcohol, why not? And if Midas is willing, we could have a call-in. I've been meaning to have a Lego in for a call-in with Midas. Just cause, just so, just because a tight one, like a tight discussion, could be a uh, could be interesting. Something, something a little looser. The state guest. I'll see. W I'll see what's up. Cause Midas might be uh, busy today. I mean, I could talk with him by myself too. The Colin is voluntary for the most part. I'm not a uh, dedicated to having to to having a Colin segment. It's just cool to have open. Or if you, the viewer, want to call in. That's via Discord, of course. You almost got a Red Bull, but you went with chocolate, huh? Interesting choice. I uh, combined with combined my Red Bull with San Pellegrino and a uh, blueberry blue raspberry Svetka. It uh, came out pretty good tubes, I would say. But that was an eight and a half ounce. I guess I'll put in another one. I had no coffee today, so it'll fit in nicely in my caffeine reserve. Wait, I thought Bang was going uh, bankrupt, weren't they? Then they get sued, they're gonna go bankrupt. I guess not yet. Today we got a tie up.
sorry. Just a little drunk. A little drunk here, acting like a spastic on my own street. Hanging out with my dogs and hanging out with my dogs. To the sweet sound of a teledisco. Oh. On the horizon, D Life. The freedom. The wild west of the internet. D Life. Dog putting their asshole on me. Not good. Bowie, Bowie, your screamer. My freestyle uh, basis. Oh shit! I think it'd be very funny to go to like a karaoke, <laughs> like a karaoke. And uh, sometimes I've seen some karaoke bars where, where they'll have the outside patio on the main street with the karaoke. Just, <laughs> just go in there and say some retarded ass shit. Maybe do a. My 15 minutes, do a little stand-up comedy. It's not as needy. Getting some food. Running out the time here on the on the YouTube stream. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. The more convenient option. But now we're at the nexus of our journey. Won't you join us on D Life with a program? It's like you've never seen it before.
Ey. I'll post the that link Reno to the old D life. Osha Scrote is live. He's probably uh, sleeping, I'm guessing. He was in here earlier. Jarl is a uh, hosting somebody. Oh, he was live. He's hosting a. Uh, I don't know who that is. No, do I care? Yeah, you can hang out in the chat until I get in there. <laughs> and if you're hanging, hanging, hanging it up for the night, that's fine too. Thank you for rocking. We're gonna be rocking for uh, four more hours if you want to join us. We'll be there when you wake up. Yeah, peace out, bros. I'll have that link float up there for a little bit. We're back on YouTube. We're punished. We're post on. I can't wait to say hi to my uh, D Live buddies. I've not been streaming there as often, so they're probably wondering if I stop streaming. I'm sure that's super loud when that happens. Sorry, let me balance this a little better. There we go. wrap it up with this song here see ya in a few seconds peace get that link get it copy it with the speed of light copy it